one of the more subtle issues that the Biden administration may need to address lingering from the Trump administration is the treatment of victims of domestic violence and gang-related violence in asylum applications. This is not an easy issue to address, and to understand the extent of it, you need to understand the issue regarding asylum eligibility. That is the issue of what constitutes a particular social group. My name is William Kovach and I am a trained immigration lawyer. I've often been disappointed in the way immigration issues are talked about in the media, although it's not always their fault. Immigration law can be a very complex subject touching upon constitutional issues as well as personal political points of view. My goal is to explain immigration law to you, concentrating on looking at judicial opinions and executive actions in order to explain how immigration law can have an impact on our community and on our country. I hope that you'll join me as we try to make sense of immigration law and how it may affect the average person. Not everyone who comes to the United States expressing fear to return to their home country are eligible to receive asylum protection. In order to receive asylum, a person must prove that they have a reasonable fear of persecution and that they are the target of persecution because of one of five protected reasons. Those reasons are race, religion, nationality, political opinion, or membership in a particular social group. It's that last category I mentioned, membership in a particular social group, that causes the biggest problems. That's because the term was not defined by Congress. It is a vague and ambiguous term, meaning it can have multiple definitions. And as such, that means it is left to the administrative agency making the decision to define the term. That means it is left to either the Department of Justice, in the case of an asylum application that is being adjudicated in the immigration courts, or USCIS, in the case of asylum application that is being adjudicated by the asylum office. In either case, the published opinions of the Board of Immigration Appeals or the Attorney General are given great weight in defining the parameters of what constitutes a particular social group. The seminal BIA case on particular social group is called Matter of Acosta from 1985. The starting point is that a particular social group must be based on a set of characteristics that are immutable, characteristics that either a person cannot change or that are so fundamental to a person's identity or conscience that they should not be required to change them. One strong example could be family or kinship ties. Another is gender. By defining particular social group this way, the BIA reasoned that they could limit asylum to people who could not avoid persecution by their own actions, or as a matter of conscience, be required to change their actions in order to avoid persecution. The board grew concerned that the particular social group category had grown so large that it was practically swallowing up the rule. The BIA sought to impose additional restrictions in order to avoid particular social groups that were created solely for the purpose of trying to win an asylum case. And so the board required a showing of particularity and social visibility with respect to a particular social group. That is, the particular social group needs to be a discrete group recognizable by the society from which they originate and have well-defined boundaries. Although, in 2014, the board clarified that social visibility was not meant to require literal or ocular visibility, the board remained concerned that asylum not be used to protect people from general conditions of strife, such as a high crime rate, general lawlessness, or a high level of violence. There has to be something about the victim that makes him or her a target for the persecution, but the characteristics that make a person a target need not be something that is visible with the naked eye. It could be a belief or an opinion, 
and it was due to a misunderstanding by the immigration judges and federal courts that the social visibility standard was renamed the social distinction standard. But this is why victims of gang-related violence will have a difficult challenge in winning an asylum case. It is not enough to show that a person is a victim of violence or that a person was targeted for a crime. Practitioners in courts have struggled with putting forth reasons for the persecution, such as business ownership or having affluent relatives in the United States. The argument that a person has been targeted because of his or her resistance to gang control has been a difficult one to prevail upon. In 2018, while serving as Attorney General, Jeff Sessions issued an opinion whereby he stated that it was not enough to show that a society had problems policing a certain crime or that certain populations may be more likely to be victims of crimes. In the eyes of Jeff Sessions, that was not enough to establish an asylum claim. He was specifically concerned with victims of gang-related violence and domestic violence. In particular, Sessions was reacting to a BIA case that found married women in Guatemala who were unable to leave their relationship to be a particular social group. It should be noted, however, that Sessions' reasoning focused on the fact that this was the result of concessions by the U.S. government in litigation, and not because of a detailed analysis by the BIA. At least two appellate courts addressing the Attorney General's decision have noted that Sessions did not foreclose the possibility that women trapped in a domestic relationship by the societies in which they live could make a showing for asylum. It's just that to make out an asylum claim would take more analysis and a better showing on the record. To be clear, it is very fair criticism of the Trump administration and Attorney General Sessions to note that they were reacting to the liberalization of asylum requirements when it came to victims of domestic violence. As a practitioner who won many cases involving victims of domestic violence from Central America, I can tell you that when you presented the right evidence to the right government attorney, you could often get the ICE attorney to agree with your client's claim. But the decision by Jeff Sessions signaled a clear anti-immigrant intent meant to shut the door on permitting more non-white people to stay in the United States legally, callously ignoring the re-victimization that this turn of events caused such victims. As it stood, as a practitioner, we already face the challenge of presenting sufficient evidence showing extreme patriarchal tendencies in the cultures of the countries from which these women came, a sort of machismo that caused police, prosecutors, and even judges to fail to take victims of domestic violence seriously. Many practitioners had succeeded in sharing evidence and information, such as affidavits from country experts, to show the extreme masculinity present within such countries and how that led to women being treated as nothing more than mere property. But what also became clear was that certain immigration judges had banded together and come up with a strategy to address this evidence so that they could deny meritorious claims when certain of their colleagues would grant the same claims with little to no question. Strategies such as using the mere fact that a society had adopted anti-domestic violence laws as a reason to deny asylum while ignoring a mountain of evidence showing that law enforcement officials and judicial officers were choosing to ignore these laws or to water them down when it came to applying them to the particular woman in front of them. That is, the superficial adoption of laws or the implementation of a showy program trumped the norms and values deeply present within a misogynist society. In 2000, the Department of Justice, then headed by Janet Reno, issued proposed regulations addressing asylum claims meant to clarify when a victim of domestic violence could make out eligibility for asylum. Unfortunately, these proposed regulations were published in December of 2000. When George W. Bush took office, his new Attorney General, John Ashcroft, never finalized the proposed regulations. The proposed regulations included provisions such as requiring immigration judges or asylum officers to consider whether the foreign government takes reasonable steps to control the infliction of harm or suffering and whether the applicant had reasonable access to state protection. Among the factors to be considered 
were whether official actions were merely perfunctory, whether there was a pattern of government unresponsiveness, and whether general country conditions led to the government's denial of services. That is, despite the presence of laws addressing domestic violence, was the government just acting in a perfunctory manner, failing adequately to implement protections otherwise established by superficial laws? In defining the term particular social group, the proposed regulations made it clear that sex and shared past experiences could be among the immutable characteristics common to the group. Factors that could be considered included whether the society in which the group exists distinguished members of the group for different treatment or status that is accorded to other members of the society. That is, does the society, as opposed to the government, favor men for treatment or status over women? That is something that is very much true of the machismo culture that permeates the Northern Triangle in Central America, countries such as Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, where the lives of women are so cheap that femicide, or the murder of women, is so prevalent that it goes unpunished far too often. The Biden administration could go a long way of correcting the further victimization of women who suffered from domestic violence by proposing once again to reincorporate these standards within the definition of persecution and membership in a particular social group. If we are to be a moral society, it is appropriate to judge us on how we treat those who are vulnerable who come to us for help whether we are willing to give that help to victims of domestic violence or victims of gang-related violence is certainly one metric to judge the moral compass of the United States. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. If there are any topics you would like me to address in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Now, I don't like talking about this, but I am currently disabled because of complications following cancer surgery. If you're feeling generous, I'll have a link to my PayPal account in the description below. Thank you.